So, me bros and she brews, welcome to this edition of Hanging with the Prophets. We will be in, I think my Bible got from Isaiah, where we at? 16, 17, 18. Isaiah chapter 17, and we will be starting Joel chapter 1. So, I hope this one will post. I don't really know what happened to yesterday's. But Isaiah chapter 17 verse 1 says, The message concerning Damascus. See, Damascus ceased to be a city and shall become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroer are forsaken. They are for flocks which shall lie down with no one to frighten. And the stronghold shall cease from Ephraim. And the reign of Damascus, and the remnant of Aram, be as the esteem of the sons of Israel, declares Yahweh of hosts. And in that day it shall be that the esteem of Jacob wanes, and the fatness of his flesh grows lean. It shall be as when the harvester gathers the grain and reaps the heads with his arm, and it shall be as he who gathers heads of grain into the valley of Raphaim. And gleaning grapes shall be left in it, like the shaking of an olive tree, two, like an olive, two or three olives at the top of the uppermost branch, four or five in its most fruit-bearing branches, declares Yahweh of Elohim, of Israel. And in that day man shall look to his master, and his eyes turn to the spirit, the, to the set-apart one of Israel, and he shall not look to the slaughter places, the work of his hands, and he shall not see that which his own fingers made nor the Asherim, nor the sun pillars. In that day his strong cities become like a forsaken forest, and an uppermost branch which they left because of the children of Israel, and it shall become a ruin. Because you have forgotten the Elohim of your deliverance, and have not remembered the rock of your stronghold, therefore you shall plant pleasant plants, and set out strange seedlings. Maybe look at that today, and... Um, if you have a little space somewhere, might want to be planting some food. Um, I'm hearing rumors that this could go, this coronavirus will possibly and more than likely last through 2020 and maybe into 2021. Um, I'm hearing some rumors from, from some sources. So you might want to start planting some food. Um, use whatever's at your disposal. Um, if you don't have a backyard, plant. Go go to Home Depot and buy some buckets. I think uh, five gallon buckets, like three or four bucks, maybe five dollars. Um, go buy some buckets. Plant some tomatoes, some bell peppers, onions, whatever you like to eat. But um, might be wise to to begin planting, y'all. Verse eleven. Day by day, make your plant grow, and in the morning, make your seed to flourish. But the harvest is a heap in the day of grief and incurable pain. Woe to the uproar of many people who make a noise like the roar of the seas, and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Now, this, what Isaiah is talking about is where do you plant your faith? Um, where is your trust at? Um, and walking in the way of Yahweh may be strange to you. Um, I mentioned planting actual fruit, actual um, food, just because that's the times we are living in. Um, but your fruit, your 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 faith had better be based in Yahweh. Verse thirteen: Nations rushing like the rushing of many waters, but He shall rebuke them and shall flee far away and be chased like the chafe of the mountains before the wind, like whirling dust before the whirlwind at evening tide look alarm before morning it is no more this is the portion of those who plunder us and the lot of those who rob us go ahead and read chapter 18 woe to the land of whirring whirring wings which is beyond the rivers of cush which sends envoys by sea even vessels of reed on the water saying go swift messengers to a nation tall and smooth skinned to a people dreaded from their beginning onward, a nation mighty and trampling, whose land the rivers divide. All inhabitants of the world, and you that dwell on the earth, 
when a banner is lifted up on the mountains, look. And when a shofar is blown, you hear, you better hear the warning sounds. For thus Yahweh said to me, I am still, and I watch in my dwelling place like dazzling heat and sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before harvest, when the bud is perfect, and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, and then he shall cut off the twigs with pruning hooks, and shall cut down and take away the spreading branches. They are left together for the mountain birds of prey for the beasts of the earth and the birds of prey shall summer on them and all the beasts of the earth winter on them at that time a present shall be brought to Yahweh of hosts from a people tall and smooth skinned and from a people awesome from their beginning onward a nation mighty and trampling whose land the rivers are divided to the place of the name of Yahweh of hosts to Mount Zion My goal, y'all, um, who hear me and who follow me, is to get this channel, this page up that Yahweh has provided this platform for, to get it to the point where I can do, where we can do live videos, and I would love to, to produce the video of the reading, and then in the evening time, sit down and, and go over what we read for the day, and and discuss there's so much information in what we're reading um, in just these five to seven chapters a day um, it keeps my head jumbled up and so if y'all would spread my videos share my videos encourage others to subscribe to this channel um, I know my content is completely different than any other platform out there and sometimes uh, the monotonous of just reading the word seems boring and, and um, a waste of time, but it's really not. Like I said, when we begin this 15 days, 16 days ago, um, reading this word is what has transformed my life. Just reading it. Um, that's not counting all of the, the studies that it's inspired me to go and look at. And so I hope it is inspiring y'all to do the same. With that said, let's go to Yoel, Joel, chapter 1, and we'll see where the Spirit takes us. Joel, chapter 1, verse 1, says, The word of Yahweh that came to Yoel, son of Pethuel, Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has this ever been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? But him, see, that's what I'm talking about, y'all. Whenever we read the word, it's amazing how it, it correlates with our days. Has, you, has, has this ever been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Our, grand, our grandparents remember the Great Depression, but I don't think we were as dependent on um, others for our lifestyle the way we're dependent on others today. So I have to say no now. With that said, nothing new under the sun. This has happened to nations before. Um, a complete collapse. But for the American people, no. No, this is new for us. Verse 3, relate it to your children and your children to their children and their children to the generation after them. What the gnawing locust left the swarming locust has eaten, and what the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. In other words, whatever's not directly impacted by the coronavirus, something else is impacting that area. Um, I look at just us here in the oil field. We are dependent on the oil field here in this, in this uh, local culture, in this local gathering of people um, that we are dependent on the oil the oil did not crash because of coronavirus the oil has crashed because russia and saudi arabia decided they were going to basically go to war with one another over gas prices uh, that's why our oil has crashed um, so verse five wake up you drunkards and weep and wail all you drinkers of wine on account of the new wine for it has been cut off from your mouth 
For a nation has come up against my land, strong and innumerable. Its teeth are the teeth of a lion and its fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vine and splintered my fig tree. It has made it entirely bare and cast it away. Its branches has become white. Wail like a maiden, girden with sackcloth for her husband of her youth. <clears throat> the grain offering, the drink offering have been cut off from the house of Yahweh. The priest, servants of Yahweh have mourned. Headline news, y'all. The field is ravaged, the ground has mourned, and for the grain is ruined, and new wine has dried up. The oil fails. <laughs> uh, now, I know what the oil in this scripture is talking about. It's talking about truth. Um, but anyone in the sound of my voice that, that depends on oil, let me hit you between the eyes. The farmers are ashamed, the vine dressers wail over wheat and over barley, for the harvest of the field is destroyed. The vine has dried up, the fig tree droops, pomegranate, also palm and apple tree. All the trees of the field are dried up, because joy has dried up among the sons of men. Has it not? Do we allow our daily toil to just wreck our afternoon, to wreck our days? I say yes. Guard yourselves and lament, you priests. Well, you attendants of the slaughter place, come and lie all night in sackcloth, you attendants of my Elohim. For grain offering and drink offerings are withheld from the house of your Elohim. Set apart a fast. Call an assembly and gather the elders, all the inhabitants of the land in the house of Yahweh, your Elohim, and cry out to Yahweh. I've been saying it. If we don't get back to, to doing what y'all says, he's going to bring this nation to her knees. I said this last year. I said it the year before. I said it the year before that and the year before that. Go look at any of my videos from a year and a half ago when I started this page. The sum total of everything I've spoken has been get back to the ways of Yahweh or this nation is going to fail. Verse 15, alas, for the day, for the day of Yahweh is near and it comes as destruction from the Almighty. Is not the food cut off before your eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our Elohim. The seed has rotted under their clods and storehouses are laid waste. Granaries are broken down and the grain withered. How the beasts moan. The herds of cattle are restless because they have no pasture. The flocks of sheep also perish. I cry to you, Yahweh, for fire has consumed the pastures, uh, pastures, pastures of the wilderness, and a flame has set on fire all the trees of the field. Even the beasts of the field cry out to you, for the water streams have dried up, and fire has consumed the pastures of the wilderness. I'm going to leave that there. We'll look at two tomorrow. Um, I kind of give you this blue sky to look at as I read. Man, I got to get me a haircut. Look at that. It's just everywhere. <laughs> Y'all, sometimes this word speaks to me. I don't know if that spoke to you. Uh, but even in the calamity that is going around us, I don't know I use weird words. It comes from when I'm reading. When destruction is all around us, and it looks like where's hope? You know, I don't see no hope in sight nowhere. There's hope in that word. That Yahweh would inspire a man to write down these words three, four thousand years ago. That would inspire me today to know that my Yahweh is true. To know that my Yah loves me. That's, that, that, that's extremely humbling to me. I've got a lot on my mind. I am, I am diligently, y'all need to know this, I am diligently seeking out what's going on around us. 
What is the truth? What is the agenda behind all this? Because there, I make no mistake, there is an agenda behind this. But I may have been looking, I may be looking in the wrong places. If you diligently seek, you'll always be able to find the truth somewhere, whether you trace it out from the money trail or you you look at that where there is no agenda behind it. You can usually dig up the truth. This whole deal, I haven't been able to dig up any. I, I haven't. Um, everything seems plausible, yet everything seems deniable. It's crazy. It's the craziest thing I've ever, ever sought out. Um, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one there. Uh, be careful who you listen to. Be careful where you put your, your basket of eggs. Um, and who you form out your faith to. Be very careful of that right now. Um, anything I say, you make sure you go look up. Um, I can assure you I'll not intentionally lead anyone astray. And I'm doing my best not to accidentally do it as well. But there's a lot going on. And we need to be vigilant. Anyway, if you ain't if you're a new listener and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go click on that subscribe button and right next to it, click on the bell and go to all. That way you get the notifications of new videos I make. Um, like the video. Give it the thumbs up. Or the thumbs down. I'm, I'm not opposed to, to objection to what I say. Um, comment in the comment section. If you have something to say, we'll discuss it. Um, I guess that's about all I got for today. Like I said, I've been kind of heavy in spirit since yesterday afternoon, and so I'm 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 praying through that and reading through that, and uh, y'all pray for me, and that Yahweh would would give me the clear vision and what's going on today. Um, like I said, be careful who you listen to, be careful who you allow into your ears and your eyes. Think about what you what you say. For, Second of all. So with that said, y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. This is Oilfield Disciple, and I will catch you on the next ride or the next reading.